Hey guys, welcome to Life Groups. Tonight we are beginning a new series all about self-image. So the way that you view yourself influences the way that you live and interact with others in the world. Maybe you view yourself as smart or stupid. Maybe you view yourself as athletic or uncoordinated, fit or fat, beautiful or ugly, shy or fun. Quite often, it's a combination of these things that make up our self image, who we think we are. Now, what's interesting is that our self image is always determined by external factors. In other words, other people and circumstances cause you to form a particular image of yourself. In this series, we are going to talk about some of those external factors. We're going to look at self-image in light of or influenced by others, our friends. Self-image in light of or influenced by sin, both in ourselves and in the world. But tonight, we are going to start off by looking at self-image in light of God. How does God inform the way that we view ourselves? So before we get into it, I want you to answer a few questions with your group. So our main point for tonight is that God rightly informs the value, the brokenness, and redempted identity of ourselves. God rightly informs the value, brokenness, and redemptive identity of ourselves. See, we need to understand that there is a reality that exists independent of our feelings, emotions, and perceptions. In other words, your feelings and your perception of things, of others and of yourself, could be wrong. It could not match with reality. I always think of this funny story that my parents used to tell me. They were on, a, on their honeymoon on a cruise ship. And at this cruise ship, you had to eat dinner with other couples. And this other couple that they met, the man introduced himself as a cop. And so my parents understood that he was a, a police officer. And through their interactions with him, they became very confused because um, he did a lot of immoral things. In fact, at one point, he even offered them drugs, which they obviously refused, but they were shocked by this. How could this police officer, how could this cop be doing all of these immoral things? Some, some things that were even against the law, like doing drugs. And then they realized that this couple is from Boston. And so when the man said that he's a cop, he's actually saying with a Boston accent that he's a carp, a cop, which is a carpenter. And so here it turns out that my parents' whole perception of this person was not matching with the true reality of who he was. Now, that's just a silly example, but this shows that our perceptions can exist apart from what the true reality might be. 
Now, the same thing can be true of our self-image. We might view ourselves as better than we actually are or worse than we actually are. This is why it's wrong and illogical to say that we should discover ourselves or that we should be true to who we are or that we should listen to our hearts. See, we need external voices to shape a right understanding of who we actually are. We can't just trust ourselves. We can't just trust our inner being to tell us who we actually are, how we should actually view ourselves. Now, you might realize that this is also flawed as well. We can't just listen to external voices to shape our view because these external voices can be misleading too. Some people say things about who you are that are untrue or that are intentionally destructive. So if we can't fully trust ourselves and we can't fully trust others, what do we do? We need a perfect external voice to inform us, to tell us who we are. And we need this voice to be the standard by which we can evaluate the words of others. This is why God must inform who we are. That he must show us how we should view ourselves. Because without him, we are lost. So our first point for tonight is that God rightly informs our value. God rightly informs our value. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27, God says, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now this is a familiar passage, but I want you to think about how this truth should impact the way that you view yourself. You are created in the image of the perfect, eternal, holy creator of the cosmos. You reflect him and you have a divine status that separates you inherently from any other created thing. Psalm 139 says that you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. So with that truth in mind, how must humans be treated? We are representing God to the creation. We must treat humans and we must view ourselves with the utmost dignity and respect. That is our value that we receive from God. However, this brings us to point number two, which is that God also rightly informs our brokenness. God rightly informs our brokenness. Now, I'm not going to spend much time on this point because we're devoting a whole lesson to it at the end of the month. But I think it's necessary to make the point here. We, we have this amazing status and value that we just talked about, but we are broken. We are something less than what we were created to be. As Romans 3 makes clear, all of us are sinners. There is no one 
who is righteous, no one who is perfect. Now, in Genesis chapter 9, God um, tells us that our brokenness does not negate our status as the image of God, but it does mar it. If God is eternally holy and good, then because we are imperfect, we are eternally far from his standard. We are in need of saving. So in the next couple minutes, I want you to take a deeper dive into these truths with your group. So our last point for tonight is that God rightly informs our redemptive identity. God rightly informs our redemptive identity. Whether you realize it or not, your self-image is not just informed by declarative statements, but rather declarative statements that create a story. Maybe you see yourself as a failure because your parents are disappointed by your grades and you can't quite measure up to your siblings. Maybe you see yourself as an overcomer because of how you persevered through injury or sickness. These are stories, these are narratives that we create about ourselves. There is a, an arc to them, a trajectory to them. Now God gives us a story about ourselves too. And we need to understand the whole story in order to think rightly about ourselves. We are a valuable creation, as we said a little bit ago, broken by sin. But we are redeemed through the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. See, in Christ, we become a new creation. It means that although we are still broken, our brokenness no longer is the truest thing about who we are. Our circumstances and our sin are a part of the story, but they are not the end of it. And this truth should radically shift our self-image. So with the rest of your time tonight, I want you to read several Bible passages about who God says you are if you are in Christ, if you put your faith in Christ, if you give your life to him. I want you to talk about these with your group and allow their power to transform the way that you view yourself. So guys, I am praying for you. I hope that you have good discussion and I will see you soon.